Oh, that's right. <coughs> Better than yesterday, guys, okay? Good morning, Rabbi Sai! Ah! That's so great. <coughs> Rabbi Sai, we have a very special day. Shechianu, Vikihimanu, Vigianu, Lazmana Zeh. As a great Sadiq once said, it's not about the daf, it's about the yomi. It's about the day in, day out sacrifices we make. Lying in bed at 1.30 in the morning, you forgot you didn't do the daf, you get up, you play it at 4x speed, you can't understand a word, you don't remember anything, that doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is all about the yomi. Well, today, we're celebrating 26 straight yomis. That's right, 26 straight days. Are we ready? That did not work as well, but... 26 straight days in Eretz Yisrael, that's right! <laughs> wow! <clears throat> and boy, have I made sacrifices. More than anyone could possibly... What's the word? Uh, have... Fathom, not, fathom, 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 thank you. Anyone could possibly fathom. 26 straight days in Eretz Yisrael means no ski trips in the Alps. No safaris. You know, my friends took me on a safari trip to Kenya for my 50th. Speaking about safaris, this is one of my favorite pictures in the safari. I took it myself. Look at this. It's a cat stretching out its back. I mean, this is such a geschmack picture. I, I love it. I can't every time I keep seeing it. So nice. Just a picture of a cat. It's beautiful. <laughs> Where was I? Oh, yeah. Sacrifices. I left behind my beautiful apartment on the water in Miami, jet skis included. I don't think I ever told you guys the story, speaking of jet skis, but you know, for the new guys, it'll be new anyways. <clears throat> so one time I was out on my jet ski and I was like, Epis, it's not a bad place for a mikvah. <laughs> Whatever, you guys all know the story with the bathing suit, l'chule, l'chule. But I, again, talking about sacrifices, I've left my uh, beachfront apartment in Miami, my 4,000 square foot mansion in Chicago, Featured once on MTV Cribs, that's right. <clears throat> this is Messiris Nefesh. Only the G'daylim of past generations could understand. Maybe this is what the Rivnitz are meant when he said I was going to be the God of Ador. I mean, America's not perfect. I ate way too much food. Romanian, hence the extra couple of pounds I put on. <clears throat> Maybe it's time to get back to the intermittent fasting. Since today is such a special occasion, I thought we should be helpful to go through some special Musagi Mushas. Nachman, since you don't come Motzei Shabbos, we're afraid that sometimes the Shia won't go an hour on Motzei Shabbos, so I add the different Sodos of Shas during the week. So we're going to get to that. <laughs> Speaking about how long the daf takes, once again, we are the best daf yomi shir in the entire world. Let me show you something. This is all the Magide shirim on all daf. And if you look, you have Wozner, 20, uh, 47 minutes. We have uh, Srili, 45 minutes. Rav Nusselin Gulper, three second daf. And that's right, our average shir, 113 minutes and 53 seconds. But the nice thing is, that Yossi Biliak did some more analysis of exactly what we're doing in those hour, in those 113 minutes. So if you take a look, you can notice that of that, 62 minutes are emails, 29 minutes are sponsors, Ahmed Olive 17 minutes, and then we freeze in and click six minutes. I mean, Ahmed Bet is always shorter than Ahmed Olive. So really, I think, you know, we're the number one shear yet again, Baruch Hashem. <clears throat> um, oh, Tomer, thank you for the reminder. Thank you, Tomer. Um, as we do every year, a bunch of tzaddikim, including uh, Peretz Chaim Levine, who has signed up 84,000 people to the DAF this week alone. <laughs> and no one here can go out of their comfort zone and post about me on their status. Okay. Everyone take out their phones right now and put their status. <laughs> but other tzaddikim have given gifts. Yossi Klein. Boy, do I just love kissing that guy. <clears throat> Anonymous from Lakewood. DH from London. Every year, these tzaddikim give Purim gifts to the most important people in the year. This year, they told me they're going to take it to the next level, and they personalized the gifts 
to make sure they would be the most meaningful and useful ever. Uh, Noam, here, take a look. Let's, let's see what you got. So what do we get, Noam? Very personalized. You can just rip that off. There you go. Don't be shy. Wow. That is nice. Beautiful. Avi, what, what'd you get? I think this is going to be a very useful gift, what I've heard. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Very personalized, thank you. Uh, and of course, Nachman, we wouldn't be the same without Nachman. This is, you know, enjoy Nachman. I'd rip it from the top, probably. <laughs> what about this guy? <laughs> He's coming, don't worry. Uh, it's a beautiful fish. Adar, oh, beautiful other fish for Nachman. His favorite. Yeah, keep that right there, perfect. Uh, oh, and my gift is right here. Wow. I wonder what this could be. Oh, for me, there better not be any glitter in this box. It's one of my pet peeves. I hate glitter. <laughs> Speaking about my pet peeves, you know what else really bothers me? I mean, aside from people davening out loud, aside from the chazen taking forever and then having the chutzpah to turn around and see if everyone else is uh, finished, people taking a whole plate of food, right, at a kiddush. No, my biggest pet peeve, people come into my house walk into my freezer and take all my Mar Romanian food right there. It's a chutzpah, by the way. No, no. Disgusting. This, I, this better not be any glitter in here. But what could this be? A 2004 Castell? Another Hermes tie? A poster of me from sukkaposters.com? An MBY branded tefillin marker to help the 95% of people who are putting in tefillin shal on the wrong way? A copy of my favorite daf. That's right. Daf Samach Aleph. It's my initials, in case you don't know. A kvi, or is it koi? I know art school says koi, but I can't get used to that. Ice for my mikvah. Do you know that? And once when I was growing up in Bensonhurst, we made our own mikvah, and now I put ice inside my mikvah. Maybe it's an illegally written get. An upgraded bidet. <laughs> A book about bad jokes on marriage and wives. Well, I think we should scratch that one. <laughs> what could possibly top all of that? I don't know. That would can't imagine. What could be better? Oh my gosh. I'm very excited. I love gifts, in case you don't know. Oh my gosh. What an amazing gift. A two-sided mirror. Oh my gosh. The entire sheer, I could just look at myself. <laughs> oh my, this could be the greatest gift ever. Atazai. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I'm just going to leave this here the whole time. It's so beautiful. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know where to go from here. This is so amazing. I'm so distracted. <laughs> I got to close that. Um, what did I write here? Hold on one second. It must be the bad lighting. Hold on one second. Oh, here we go. My uh, magnifying glass so I can read what I wrote here. Uh, you got to edit this out, Yosef. Like, I don't want anyone to know that I can't see anything. <laughs> Anyways, we're, oh my gosh, we're running out of time. We're so late. Let's kind of get to a couple of Sodos of Shas. But before we get to your Sodos of Shas, I have a, a, a very quick one slide that should explain today's daf. Okay, once we go through this, the rest of the daf will be smooth sailing, super easy. I think this will be very informative. And without this, without this slide, we won't understand the daf. There's Grover, of course, after a hard night of campaigning, the uh, chosid on sleeping on the bench. And then there's, of course, Big Bird. So there's a lova, oh, throwing in a can of doggin, and back at the malva. I think that should make it very easy for everyone to understand. But thank God we have this slide, otherwise we wouldn't understand today's daf. Okay, so let's get through the yisodos of shas. We, got, we don't have much time here left, Chedra. First yisod, I'm just a typical ball of us. I mean, everyone flies a plane in mansions. I mean, I'm just a typical ball of us. <laughs> we don't live a yoytze life, okay? I just want you to know. Everyone knows this one. This one should everyone should know this already if they don't already. To be on the cruise, you need to be here from brachos. That's right. If you didn't come to the Shabbaton, you're not invited to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite, I think. Chodosh is a dalraisa. If you want to rely on a kula, that's up to you. 
I'm not judging. That's fine. I just want you to know that Chadush is a Daraisa. Very important, and I've heard a lot of complaints about this one, and I want to make sure we have this just sewed, nailed down. There's absolutely no soliciting in MDY, except for Nachman's bucks, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and my favorite all time, and I think it's important that we go through this sewed one more time, fellas. Really, it's important. There's something called Meiser Shani, okay? <laughs> so the third year, the sixth year, you take it, and then, oh, oh, what happened? Oh, who did that? Oh, well, let's watch that one again. Hold on. <laughs> I don't think we got enough. My Shoshani, third, for one, two, four, five, right? Three and six is my Sushani. We take 10%, right? We bring it, you shall we redeem it, except if it, oh, someone falls on the trip. Oh, that is not supposed to happen. Okay. So, Chavra, we really, Mamash, have no time. Um, oh, one more, one more slide. Okay, I think this really should wrap things up very nicely. Let's watch this last video I put together. Is the video, where's the sound? There we go. <laughs> I don't think you guys can see who's in the car there. Maybe zoom in a little bit if you can. Yeah. <laughs> One more time so you can see who's in the car. <laughs> Hold on one second. <laughs> Mendy, here he comes, the cop. Here's Mendy. <laughs> Mendy. <laughs> Mendy, enough of this knowledge, guys. Let's shut it down. Chodesh Tov, and have a great day, Rabbi Exactly, by the way. A good Hoydash Rabboy Sai. Ah! Lily Nishma, Simi Murosurus, Miss Mordechai, Yishkoyach, Jonathan. Somebody asked me yesterday, he says, You're going to let this happen again? Yes. If it brings one more person to Tyra, I'll take the rose thing. <laughs> Not a single maggot cheer out there. Here, put this down, Jonathan. The best, best cheer. There's not a single maggot cheer out there that let himself get roasted year after year, knowing what I'm in for. What a honor, what a honor. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbi said, so we're going to skip all the emails. We're going to go straight to. I I know. Welcome, welcome to all the guests. Shalom Aleichem guests. Where's your father? Shalom Aleichem, Shalom Aleichem. <laughs> he came here for you. I got it. He, we might hop him. We might. We might. Who, Rabbi Victor? He won't be the first one I stole from him. I go after this. Rabbi Leader. Rabbi Leader used to go to his chair. Yeah. The Besech is sponsored by Anonymous, the safe and speedy return of all the hostages. Parents of Chodesh Mazatov, Aaron, Rabbi Eli, and the entire Mishpacha on the birth of Sophia Rus Yishkoyach. To the sponsor, I found out yesterday who it is. It's very heartwarming. Shkoyach. Paras Achaydish. Lilinishma Zachay ben Moisha. Lilinishma Zachay bas Yosef. Might be the same person. Paras Achaydish. Aaron Freeman, it should be his chus to rebellion for continuing to see at the Shemai and teaching Torah to Klai Yisrael. Paras Achavua, Yaakov and Malka, Luxembourg. Lilinishma Rochel Gittel bas Moisha and Yecheskel ben Avram Moisha. Paras Ayoim. Shloimi Nussenswag from Monsi. I forgot to say Raboisai. You don't understand this. Jonathan is having a bris today for his grandson. And nevertheless, he was here. It's unbelievable. Wow, what sacrifice. 
Yaakov Malka Luxembourg, Lilin Shmai Rocha Gidel Bas Moisha, Yechesko Ben Avram Moisha. Parasa Yom Shlemi Nosim Tzweig from Monsi in honor of his daughter's wedding tonight. The wedding tonight at Teres Charna Hall in Monsi. Parasa Yom Jonathan Stefanski in honor of the birth and the bris or the Brit today of our newest grandson to our children Boaz and Sarah. Parnas Hayoim, Shimon Braun, Lerfuas, Rabbi Yisrael Chaim Shalom Ben Soro Sero, Chazak V'yametzli Becho, the heart should have a refuah shleima. Parnas Hachoydesh, anonymous for the schuz for an easy child with his daughter and a healthy baby, Raboisai, Yishur Koyach to Jonathan, Yishur Koyach to the oil for being here. A good and choydish, rich choydish, other, Mishinichnas, other Marvin Besimcha. We are holding the Yud Bey's Omud Aleph, four lines down. I need the reflection. Let me just look one more time, make sure that. Okay. Gufa. Yeah, you guys have it? Gufa, four lines from the top of Yud Bey's Omud Aleph. It says in the Mishnah, a person noticed that people are running after an object that's hefkir right through his field. So we say that he is koined. Provided that he's able to catch up to, the, to this item, whatever it is, this deer, bird, before it leaves his, his rishos, his field. And we had this yesterday, so we're familiar with it. Does this same halacha that you have to catch it, be able to catch it, does it apply also to if somebody gives you a gift? Let's say somebody puts a, a turtle in your backyard and you're out of town. And by the time you get home, the turtle already had left your rishos, your property. Are you kind of, since it's a gift, what's the difference? Says Gemara, there's a big difference. Kabla Meneir of Aber Bar Kahana, Rabbi Rabbi Kahana accepted the difference between from Rabbi Yirmiya, that what? When it comes to a gift, you don't have to be able to catch it. Why? What's the difference, Rabbi Yisai? No, based on what we learned yesterday. Anybody? When you're trying to acquire a metziah that came to your field, nobody's giving it to you. It's hefker. But when it comes to a matana, you have a das acheres. You have the guy that owns the gift. He's giving it to you. He's what's the word, Jonathan? He is. No. He's makna to you. Okay, there's no other word. No word. He's makna to you. <laughs> Says the Gemara. Boy, you Okay. Uh, okay, transfer ownership to you. There's somebody that's going to transfer ownership to you. Okay, semi good. Boy, Rava, Zorak Arniki be Pesach Ze, Viotso be Pesach Acher Mahu. We have a Givaldic picture here. Okay, I don't want to mess this up. So here we have a guy holding a wallet in his hand, and there's a catcher on one side and the pitcher with the wallet on the other side. Here it goes. Boom. Now you understand the sugya. <laughs> so the question is, does the ear space of the house, does it acquire the wallet? It passed right through. Now I want to show you this one. Another one. Check this out. He throws the wallet, boom, it lands in the house. Is that different? So, what happens in that exact case? You throw it, it's supposed to land on the couch, and instead, so, some random guy caught it. <coughs> What's the halacha? The halacha is that since it was going to land in the house, so the house acquires it, even though it didn't land, it's not this random guy that came and caught it, it's the owner of the house that gets to keep the wallet. But Gemara is asking, what about in our case? It, it wasn't supposed to land in the house. It's going to land outside of the house. But maybe as it's passing through the house, the house, you, you, you do like a slow motion or a still. And for that moment, it caught it. Shalom Aleichem. What's your name? Levin Brown. Levin Brown from? 
Shamalechem Rabbi Yosef Levin from Baltimore. So, it's like Kluta, kind of. All right. So, Avir Shein Tzoyfer Lenuach. It's not going to rest. This wall is not going to rest inside the house. Kimunach Dami. It's like a Kluta. Do we say, oh, it, it had some sort of resting as it was flying through the house. Oilai. I love this. I A lot of freebie here. Some people said it was Rapapa Tarova. And some people say it's Ravina Larova. Now, we're going to say the, the Gemara's Pshat. And you're going to tell me why you don't think this Pshat is a good Pshat. Again, our question is if somebody throws something through somebody's property and it doesn't land in the property, could. The property acquired. We're going to bring a ride from our Mishnah from a deer. This mitzia is going to leave the property eventually. You have to be able to catch up to it. What about we just something that we just learned today? Repeating the sugya. What about a gift? And Rabbi Abba accepted from Rabbi Yirmiyah that a gift is different. If you have a turtle going through your property, by the time you get back from Houston, it's out of your property. It's still your turtle. So what do you see? <coughs> that your property acquires it even though it's passing through the property. So what's the problem, Rabbi Boy? What's the difference between a flying... I'm going to help you. It's a flying wallet and a walking turtle. Oh, oh, very good. Psst. We have a lot of Tamil Chachamim in the room here. Mamash, a huge nafkimina. Oh, my lay. Ms. Galgo Kamras. You tell me something that's going on, walking on the ground? Shani Ms. Galgo, the Kimunach Dami. We even had him in the Shabbos. As a person is walking, he takes a step, and then he lifts up his, but while he lifts up his foot to take another step, this foot is planted. It's planted on the ground, it's not moving. So at that point, the turtle is acquired by the ground. But something that's flying through, make a that your house acquires it and is coined it. So we don't have a good, we don't have a good answer to that. <coughs> However, I forgot who says it. The Ktsois, I believe. Yeah, yeah, the Ktsois says that since the Gemara doesn't have uh, here. So if, in fact, a baseball goes through your house, a football goes through your house, nobody should take it. People from the other side shouldn't take it because it's possible that you acquired it and now you're stealing from that guy. Says the Elegy Mishnah, sponsored by Moshe Cohen, Now we're talking about who does it a nice find belonged to. If Benoi, Ubita Yaktana, his son or daughter that are below the age of Barabbas Mitzvah. So when it comes to a daughter, we know, Kol Shevach Nurim Lavia. We had this whole thing yesterday. If you have a boy and a girl in a box, in a four by four, and they find Lego, it goes to the girl. Yeah, it goes to the girl, but eventually it ends up in the father's hands anyway. She acquires it, she gives it to her father. They have a deal, anything she, there's no good source. We don't know yet what the Pshat in the son is. And the daughter, everything she acquires goes to her father. Ketanim, Rashi just points out, referring to Anaira also. So let me just show you this thing real quickly. So these are the different stages in a girl's life. Ketana is from 0 to 12. Naira is from 12 to 12 and a half. So Rashi says, when it says in the Mishnah, Ketanim, it's also referring to a Naira up to 12 and a half. You get another half a year here. It's Neget to the Gemara, actually. The Gemara is going to hint to it that a father uh, acquires his daughter's possessions until 12 and a half. She, in other words, she doesn't leave the father's Rishos until she's a Begaris, until 12 and a half. Which is important to 
a Kav that the Gemara just brings in passing without saying the Kav if we want, we could get into it and just, we'll mention it there. Metziah Savdoi, if you have a, a Evet Knani, Gufoi Kanoi, his body is owned by you, so whatever he picks up becomes yours. Veshivchasai, same thing with the Shivcha Knani. Metziah Sishtoi, if your wife finds something, it also belongs to you. Why? She's an adult, she, she's independent. The answer is, is, we're going to see the whole sugya, this a concept called Eva. That there shouldn't be any fighting. In the time of the Gemara especially, you're taking care of your wife, you supported her from A to Z, you gave her a place to sleep, you gave her all the food, everything she needs, clothing. So we don't want the husband to be upset at her. Oh, she finally acquired something, now she's going to take it for herself. Shum Eva, give it to the husband. <sighs> I didn't put it there. <laughs> Dave, don't worry about it. Just keep it there. Do it again. There you go. Status clips. It's my it's like uh, we're gonna have soon the running thing. Rebellious of asking about cheer. Put do you have anything for Jonathan? Okay, we'll have something for Jonathan soon. Budweiser or MDYMonthly.com to set up a monthly donation. Baksham, they didn't make me do anything for the uh, for the charity event yet. Hare El Shaloi. Mitzias. <laughs> if you're wondering how come there's like no art yet, well, this is older. I was wondering why, what's going on? Like I had to wait a, a bit for the art. Somebody chapped my artist for a few hours. <laughs> Seriously, I come here, it's like, ah, oh, that's where he was. This car's going this way, that way. That whole Leuven Malva, that's today's chart. He chapped today's chart. <laughs> Just say he was on the right team this year. Wow. <laughs> yeah, let's just say he was on the right team for one day. He's going to have to find another team. I hope you have, uh, you can, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Look at this chart. What's going on here? All the charts are broken today. But anyways, this is today's chart. I can't, here, oh. So he took this chart I made it for him. Ah, he's probably sitting there in his house laughing his head off now. Okay. <laughs> Fine. So, Mitziah's b'noi u'bita agdoilam. What about his son that's above bar mitzvah, his daughter that's above bas mitzvah, hagdoilam? Who should that go to? It should go to them. They're adults. Let me ask you a question. Is there any havamina? You have an 18 year old son that lives by you. He's one of those 18 year old sons, you know, that plays video games all day. He, he lives by you. He doesn't leave the bedroom. You, you actually feed him in his bed. Every day you bring him a meal at, at two in the afternoon when he finally wakes up, you give him a drink, a meal, then he goes right into the video game till four in the morning. And then the whole, he's 18 years old. He finally finds, he walks out one day, lucky him, he finds a pile of cash. Is there any Hava Amina that should belong to the father? Yeah, yeah what? He's 18 years old. <laughs> wow. So I want to tell you something very interesting. To the Americans that are very familiar with this phenomenon, it was very, it was very obvious. The Israelis had no clue what I was talking about. Like, what? It's video games. Who plays video games? My, my son is never home. He's not, I'm Samich al Shulchan. He's not Samich al Shulchan. Okay, yeah, you're right. There is a concept of we'll see later. Not everybody agrees with it 100%, but there is a concept, yes, even though he's an adult, you should get his stuff. Why? Again, because the same kind, the same way you take your wife's stuff, you take your son's things. You don't want to fight in the house. It's not going to be a fight at all. If you come over to him and take his cash that he found in the street, there's no fight at all. <laughs> the Gemara says, I take it, I take it. Okay, Dad, no problem. Let me go back to my video game. I can just see it happen. What about your wife after you divorced her and she finds something special? Even though you didn't give her the ksuba yet, it goes to the wife, it goes to the adult child. Great. We understand everything in the Mishnah. There's one part we don't understand. We don't understand why is the find of a younger child, why does it go to the father? We're, a daughter, I get, we have Benurea Be Sevilla, we have Psukim and Adarim, we have whole Sugyas. But what about a boy? 
The reason is The reason is because anytime a child finds an object, he runs to show his father. In other words, what's the lumbus behind it? He runs and he shows his father. So what? Because when he lifts it off the ground, he has a mind that his father should acquire it. I'm, I'm being kind of it. I am. A, I'm. I, I might be acquiring it for my father. Automatic. It's an automatic thing. It's natural. Says the Gemara. The member of the Sovish Shmuel called Leslie Schiel and Avshem de Raisa. What you're telling me is that if that's the case, that he goes and acquires it for the father, that means that he doesn't have the ability to acquire it for himself. Because if he did, then it wouldn't go to the father. It would go to himself. He would have to give it. It's not automatic. You tell me he doesn't have the, the ability to acquire for himself. But Tanya, this is very interesting, Rabbi Sai. What's interesting to me is that already a few days we're handling like a chikha on peya. Remind you, just yesterday we were talking about chikha. You, you forgot a sheaf, you forgot a bundle. Peya, we spoke two days ago about the corner of the field. These are all madness and the stuff you give tonight. Today, we're going to finish it off with like it. It's the three things, Leket, Shikha, and Peya. It's in reverse, in reverse order, I guess. We started with Peya, Shikha, Leket. So Leket is as you are gathering your, your, your wheat, you're harvesting, you drop a couple of pieces. The poor could go and grab the, the wheat. Now, as we learned the other day, Let's say you own the field and you're extremely poor. You're not permitted to take the wheat. Why? Because when it comes to this field, you're an usher. Halachically, you're wealthy. You don't have a dime to your name, but you're not allowed to take the wheat like as a rich person. A wealthy person can't take the wheat, only poor people. The Torah says, you own the field, you're not allowed to take it. So we're going to call you wealthy. Not that you're wealthy, not that you made a lot of money off this field. You're wealthy, you're going to get this field. What about your son? Your son, it says over here, you go to work with your son, it's bring your kid to work day. You bring your kid and he walks behind the father and he keeps on picking up pieces. Hopefully the father's not dropping them on purpose. You know what I mean? He, it's, as he's working, it drops and the kid picks it up. Says the Gemara, you're allowed to keep it. He has to keep it. So what does this prove to us? So we'll see in a second. Lemechza, however, if the worker is not a worker, he's a partner, he gets 50% of all produce, he's an artist, he's a sharecropper, he gets a certain amount every time, no matter what, then the son is not permitted to gather behind his father. Why? Because now the father is considered wealthy. The father is a partner in the field. Partner in the field, he can never take from that field, even if he Makes his nechassim hefker lamishenet. Reb Yosi Yomer ben Kach or ben Kach yelaket b'noy v'yishti achrov. Reb Yosi says, regardless, the son could gather. V'amar Shmuel halacha k'ir Reb Yosi. The halacha is like Reb Yosi that a son could always gather. Now the Gemara explains the question. If you say the pshat is that the katan he's able to be zayich for himself, he come alaket lanafshei come alaket. The reason why he's permitted. To gather according to Rabbi Yaisi, Shmuel says, the Allah is like Rabbi Yaisi, you're allowed to gather. Why? He's an individual entity, he does his own thing. He has nothing to do with his father. He gathers, acquires it for himself. Avu Ashiru. Eli Amr's cotton, sorry. Vavu Aminei Kazachi. So he gathers, he acquires, he's kaina. Once he's kaina, he gives it over to his father. Eli Amr's cotton, Leslie Skil and Afshay. But if you say that a cotton, a minor, he doesn't have the ability to acquire for himself. So all he's doing is he's gathering for his father. That's 100% also. Why? His father is considered wealthy in this case. He's not allowed to take the leket. So why could they do that? Says the Gemara, you're right. Shmuel says that a, father, that a son, a minor, does have schia. Does a minor have schia or not? Could a minor, could a katan acquire things for himself? Shmuel says yes. And therefore, since he says yes, he could walk behind his father and pick up stuff because he's acquiring for himself, not for his father. If he's acquiring for his father, it would be also. So what's Shmuel saying in the Mishnah? Shmuel is explaining the Mishnah. He doesn't hold like the Mishnah. 
He explains the Mishnah. Shmuel time it did done. Why does the Mishnah say that if a small child finds a metzia, it goes directly to the father? Aye, a cotton acquires from himself. No, the tan in the Mishnah holds a cotton does not acquire from himself. The tan of the Mishnah is mechulik on Shmuel. Vilei loy svirle. He's explaining the Mishnah. I don't. I, I'm not explaining the Mishnah. It's my duty to explain the Mishnah, but I don't hold like the Mishnah. Again, what comes out here? Shmuel says that a cotton has the ability to acquire for himself, and therefore, he could walk behind his father and pick up anything that the father drops because it's not his father; it's him. If he afterwards he gives it to his father, that's something else. He's allowed to give it to whoever he wants. The Mishnah says that a cotton that finds a metzia must give it to his father because the, the Mishnah holds that a cotton does not acquire for himself. Immediately he goes to the father. As the Gemara of cotton says, says, comes out here, the Rabbi Yossi holds that you're allowed to go, a, a child is allowed to go behind his father. Obviously he holds that a cotton acquires for himself. Midoraisa. Because like it is a deraisa, it's a deraisa for the father to take it from the, for, from the son. It's a problem. Why? Because we learned, but it says the Mishnah, if a cherish shayt v'katan, if a cherish shayt v'katan, find something, yesh bohem mishum gezel, mipnei dark yisholem. Let's say you see a kid find a diamond ring. You like the diamond ring, obviously. It's worth $10,000. You walk over to him, take it out of his hand, and walk away. Were you over anything? Midirai said nothing. Why? Because he cannot acquire. Oh, so you see that a cotton cannot acquire. Midirabanan, you're over. Rabban said, don't do it. You're going to create fights. The father's going to come yell at you. You're going to get into a fist fight here. Don't bother. Leave it by the cotton. Rabbi Yossi Oimer, Gezel Gomer. What does it mean, Gezel Gomer? Midirabanan is Gezel Gomer. Explains the Gemara of Rav Chizda, Gezel Gomer, Midivrayim. Rabbi Yossi also agrees that Midir Raisa allowed to take from the cotton. He does not acquire Midir Raisa. And that's the Gemara's question. You see over here, Rabbi Yossi holds, he doesn't acquire Midir Raisa. We just proved that Rabbi Yossi holds that he's allowed to go behind his father and pick up the leket, meaning the cotton does acquire Midir Raisa. Just as a side note, what's the difference between Rabbi Yossi and the Zanakama? They both say that Midir Abanon, they're not allowed to, you're not allowed to steal from a child. So the Gemara explains, Rabbi Yossi says that such a strong the Rabbanon, Rabbanon made it like a Dairaisa, just like a Dairaisa, you're not allowed to steal from somebody, and if you do, he could take you to Bezdin, he'll take it away from you. So too, if you steal from a Katan, although it's only an Issa the Rabbanon to steal from him, but Rabbanon will enforce their Halacha and take it out of his hands and give it to you. The bottom line is that a Katan does not acquire anything with the you have to come on to Darkish Shalom in the Rabbanons, according to Rabbi Yossi. You're right. Rabbi Yossi holds a cotton doesn't have schia. He cannot acquire anything. So how come if a cotton, a cotton is permitted to walk behind his poor father, lift up the tfuah and acquire it? A new halacha. Asua kemisha alchuba ne mushois. There's a concept called mushois. Here's the picture, Rabbi Yossi. Beautiful. Ne mushois means. When Danim are done with the field, who comes at the end? The people that could barely walk. It takes them a long time to get there. So all the young guys, <coughs> the guys that have the young blood, they're on basketball teams, they come flying through, they pick up everything, and they leave. Then the guys, the 90-year-olds, come with their canes, and they literally, they go through the field piece by piece, and whatever's left over is left over. Imagine if you found out that the Mushas went through the field. That's it. You're done. You're not going to bother wasting your time going to that field. You heard the Nemushas were there already. So it's like it's like a Yish. I gave up. Oh, you gave up. The Mela, the kid is allowed to take it. Not because he's Zaycha, because then anybody could take it. You also, you Yisrael, could also take it. You multimillionaire could go in there and you find two. You can take it. Why? Danim are done with it. Danim Gufay Maskadatayu, Sari Bereta Hachmalakile. They say, oh. If this guy went with somebody walking behind him, it's, the little kid will pick up everything. It's a, it, we give up on this field. Are you allowed to do this? You allowed to put a lion at the at the gate of the of the field and say, "Don't come in here." How are you permitted to bring your child? And then everyone says, "Oh, you know what? The child, the children were there already. Forget it." To begin with, how are you allowed to bring your children? It's very good. It's all good. 
sponsored by innovations in honor of my uncle Rebbe Cholim Pressman as a schos for Akiva Simcha Ben Fega Amen. By Nair Tumid of Baltimore, Maryland, in honor of official Simcha Gross, thanks to them, 137 people learned over 16,000 daf and over 720,000 minutes of emails. I'm sorry, 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 i am sorry i am sorry i am sorry i am we should show that picture again. Just stop. Where's that picture there? Anyway, says the Gemara, a cotton is not allowed to go in there and chase everybody away. Says the Gemara, yes. We allow the cotton to go in there, lechatchila. Even though he's in a zaycha, even though he doesn't have the ability to acquire, we made him a zaycha, we made him an acquirer. Why? My time. Anim gufayu nicholo. The anim, all the poor people, the shevet anim, they all got together and they said, listen, let's allow people to bring their kids to work. Why? Because if I allow you to bring your child to work, then tomorrow you'll allow me to bring my child to work. It's a great deal. So Mamela, yes, you're right, they shouldn't. But once they made a deal, they could. When they hire me, then I'll get the deal also. My kid will walk behind me and, and pick up all the leftovers. Says Gemara. Again, Shmuel holds that a child doesn't have the ability to acquire anything. It goes directly to his father. That, says the Gemara, he's in disagreement with Rebchia. This is what we just discussed before. When we talk about a gadol, and when we talk about a cotton, we're not talking about their age, we're talking about the maturity. Or, I shouldn't say maturity, but when you have an 18-year-old that sits there in your house and takes from you, that's a katan. The Vilna Gaon says a beautiful vart on this Gemara. He says, it says, it's a ma'ara katan. The moon is small. It's not so small. It's hundreds of miles, whatever the circumference, I don't know, thousands of miles. Yeah, thousands, a hundred, thousands. Huge. Might be, uh, what, half the size of the earth? I don't know, whatever it is. Okay? It's, it's very large. So, why is it called katan? So you say, compared to the sun. No. So the Vilna Gaon, because it derives all its Light from another source. So when you take, when you live off somebody else, the Torah calls you a cotton. And Mamela, if you're soybech al shuchan aviv, you're a cotton. El gadol b'samech al shuchan aviv, zeo cotton. If you're an adult, you're 18 years old, and you live by your father's house, you're a cotton la'alacha, why? Because we don't want you to fight with your father. So we make a deal. You take all the food, room and board, but if you find something ever, uh, in case you ever find something, you'll be one of those one out of a million that yeah, find, because most people lose. Father, I'm never the guy that finds. I'm always the guy losing. You support your father, let's say. Oh, we'll you get there in a second. Father. We'll get there in a second. Mamish in a second. Right. Let me just finish this line here. If you're a 10-year-old, but you're independent, you don't live by your father, you're a gadol. So you cannot take your metzia. It's not about being small, about being young. It's about living by your father's house. Now, Somebody asked Rav Moshe Feinstein, that's, that's what Rav Nachman is basically maybe talking about, maybe this will answer the question. So I asked Rav Moshe Feinstein, I go to South Africa for the summer with my whole family, I stay by my tati's house for two months. Yeah, Mendy? Three weeks. Three weeks. It's, a lo- it's a long time. I am soymech al shuchan ovi. My father m- makes me breakfast, my father pays for everything for Shabbos. I'm soymech al shuchan ovi. I have my children with me. Now my child found a find, does it go to the grandfather, to Harav Goyna Tzadik Rabbi Oyerbach from South Africa? <laughs> He's asking for care. Right. So I want, no, no, based on this. Right, right. But let's see the answer of Ramosha Feinstein. Ramosha Feinstein says, no. Number one, he says, no. Mendy has to support his children, even if they're in South Africa. It happens to be that he's getting free food from his father. But it's his responsibility for his children. But what about a case, he goes further, he says, what about a case that he doesn't really sponsor, he doesn't take such care of his father? He says, no, a grandfather, it, it stops by a father, it doesn't go to a grandfather. So based on that, what was your question again? It, let's say your, your father doesn't have money, and his son supports his grown-up father. And then the father is the grandfather. Right. So I'm saying, so I think, I think, based on this, I think based on this, you're right, 
Based on this, I think well, the answer would be no. Because it's not about somebody supporting somebody else or random people. It's one generation down, the normal, the typical. Mm-hmm. We don't even include the grandfather in this. I think. I don't know. Might be wrong. Yeah. I hear somebody asked that also yesterday. I don't know. Huh? For technical reasons, for technical reasons the child supports the father. The father? We're talking about Eva over here. We're talking about your chiyuv. A father has a chiyuv to support his child, and 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 a father has a chiyuv. A husband has a chiyuv to support his wife, and because he has this constant ab- obligation, he gets upset when they finally bring a dollar home and they keep it for themselves. Do you have that same svara when a random person is very nice to somebody, takes in a uh, a yasim off the street and then supports him. I don't know that he has the chiyos. So I don't know if the, he's doing what. Shilo. Okay, Tais says not. Givalde. I should look in the Tais once in a while. Anyway, I try to. Smitzias after Shuchasi Ivrim Arei Yushal Atzvon. Amai. Says Gemara. We learned. We just learned the sugi. I'll remind Oilam. We had a sugi about the the guy taking a seven year job in the Air Force, right? The, you work for somebody for a long time, you work for somebody for the, the whole day, you're working by the day or you're working by the job. You might have made enough communion. So what it says, why is it that if you have a Jewish slave, a Jewish slave who works for you full time, what is he supposed to do? Anything you ask him. So he should be like, a, like an employee that works for you for the day and when an employee that works for you for the day finds something, it goes to you. And the Gemara explains over there, take out the weeds, dig for me. But if he said, I'm not going to tell you what, you just work for me, then the, the employer, he gets to keep the fine. So obviously, a shivcha, an evidivri, who works for seven years, if he finds something, he should go to the master. We're not talking about a regular slave. We're talking about he does something very specific. He does something that brings in a lot of money. Let me show you real quickly. This is Noikiv Margolis. I thought it's beautiful. These are natural Reboisai without any dyes included. Pearls. That's what Margolis is. Now, these pearls, they're... Between one hundred and fifty to ten thousand dollars, some of them cost even fifteen thousand dollars a pearl if it's perfect shape and color. And we're talking about something that costs a lot of money, right? Noikev would be this. Oh, I by mistake put thank you here because Dave. I asked Dave during Shacharis if he could throw in this video, and he did. I wrote thank you. I thought he was going to take it out. Dave, oh, it's out. Wow. Noikev means this. It's just to make the hole in the pearl. The bottom line is we're talking about a highly skilled, uh, what's the word? Craft. Craft, a highly skilled craft. And the guy earns a lot of money. And if he finds two Legos on the floor, the owner doesn't want him to pick it up. He doesn't want them at Sia. He's dealing here with tens of thousands of dollars an hour. He, he, He doesn't care about a Lego. But what if the guy finds a $20,000 ring, but because the master had in mind that all metzias, I don't want your metzias, I don't want your, I don't want anything, I want you to focus on pearls, that's it, because it's a highly valued, skilled thing, now that you found it, you hear there's a little bit of counterintuitive over here, but now that you found a very expensive diamond, it's the slaves, because the master says to begin with, I don't want anything to do with the, with the, uh, I don't want anything to do with, with the Metzia. So he, he's thinking about the cheap Metzias. He doesn't think to himself, there might be a, a, a valuable Metzia. But it's too late. He already said, no Metzias. You, 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 you stick to Margolias. Now, if the slave breaks his deal and picks it up, he's going to have to pay him the two and a half dollars that he, that he spent on picking it up. The time. Time only I'm talking about. I was just thinking here, I know you're going to not like this so much, but too bad. But maybe that Torah is Pninim. Torah, Kare even Pninim, it says. Torah is more valuable than, 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 than pearls. So we, as Loim the Adaf, because Baruch Hu, hired us to do the Daf. We accepted upon ourselves we're going to learn the Daf, 
We do the daf. We are slaves to the daf. Now, and this you're not going to like so much, but this is my argument. If you're supposed to do the daf right now, like we had Shmuel Eliwat that day, they said, I got to collect Zdaka. Zdaka is a beautiful metziah. It's a metziah. It's like finding a diamond in the floor. But Lamaisa, we're hired to do Margoliois. You shouldn't be doing anything else. When you're, you could go be Menachem Oval instead of doing the daf. You could go be Kerchoylev. There's a lot of beautiful metziahs. We're hired to do the daf. We're talking about you hired him to take the uh, to, to to mow the lawn, and he's on this lawnmower, this tractor. He's driving through, and he finds a, a baseball on the field. He picks it up. It didn't co- it didn't it has nothing to do with the owner, with the employer. It, it didn't cost him anything. Rapapa Omar, says we're talking about the case of the worker. I take a worker, if I tell him to adore me, nakeshi me, that's one thing. If I tell him the whole day, what happened? I told him, I want you to gather lost objects. So today we can understand it. What's a lost object? How do I hire someone to find lost objects? Where do you find lost objects? On the beach. Go on the beach with that uh, metal detector. Let me f- you, I'm hiring you. Here's the machine. I'm hiring you per the hour. Fine. So if you find $100, I tell you anything you find goes to me. So you have to give it to me. In the time of the Gemara, they didn't have those things. So, something like this. Something's stuck here. Here. Yafi. When the, the, the ocean spit out fish. So now you have a lot of free fish. It's a, it's a mitzvah. So I tell the guy, come, help me out today and take, take the fish. Rabbi said, I apologize only because we, we started a little late today. But no, quick. I want to tell you a real quick story. Yuvalikis Maisa that happened with fish and a find. I think. It's a beautiful story. There was a guy that went to an auction house. He wanted to buy a nice chair, a nice comfortable chair. And once I'm at it, I'll throw in a, 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 a cheer.com, cheermarket.com. No. But I, if you, somebody asked me, I bought a very expensive chair. It's called Herman Miller. So I said, Meshuggah costs $2,000 here in Israel. What you, what's wrong with you? I said, $2,000 is nothing compared to your $50,000 car. I sit on the chair for 12 hours a day. I need something comfortable. You go from uh, two minutes and you spend, uh, ah, I hear, I hear. Highly recommend if you sit a long time, you should think about it because uh, otherwise your back starts hurting. This guy wanted a Herman Miller chair. Heard about it. Actually in Chicago, I said, in Israel, I sit on one. So why not in America? So I found out they sell, they auction, they buy from auctions from these places that go out of business. Hundreds of these Herman Miller chairs, you get them for half the price, whatever. I bought one mamish brand new. This guy goes to buy his brand new Herman Miller chair. He's supposed to bid on number 51. He puts in a bid for 100 bucks for Herman Miller chair. And he wins. Nobody outbids him. So the whole place starts clapping, clapping. So what are you clapping? It's just a chair. Turns out the 51 was not a chair. 51 was a giant freezer storage facility. He bought a whole freezer for st- in a fish place, full of fish, everything, the whole freezer. Now, to take it apart cost tens of thousands of dollars, to ship it in another few ten thousand of dollars, and here's a firm guy, he paid a hundred bucks for it, and now he's stuck with tens of thousands of dollars. He's not, what is he gonna do now with a freezer? Imagine a freezer, a storehouse that could store thousands of pallets. So, doesn't know what to do. He's managed to brachen. Not only did he get his chair, he's about to walk out. All of a sudden, this guy comes in, flying, huffing and puffing. Oh, man, I missed the auction. He says, yeah, you missed the auction. What do you want? He says, oh, I wanted the freezer, man. I wanted the freezer. So he says, this guy bought the freezer. Talk to him. So he says, how much do you want to sell? He says, give me an offer. He says, I'll give you $100,000. He says, give it to me. Eh, okay, fine. I'll give it to you for $100,000. So, <laughs> okay. Hi, Shivrei Chidami asked the Gemara. Oi, Vavoy, should we stop here? How do we stop here? What time do we. <coughs> Till the Mishnah? Okay. Hi, Shivrei Chidami. Idai Sishtei Sairois. This Shivcha, that the Mishnah says that when she finds something, it goes to her master. What is it talking about? If she's a Gdoila, she already has Simonim, my Baigabe, then she's not a Shivcha anymore. She's released automatically. She's a Jewish slave released automatically when she gets Simonim. And if she's not a Gdoila, she's a Ktana. If she has a father, still even if she's a slave, the Hermetia goes to her father. 
And if she doesn't have a father, the fact that her father died, the mo- who sold her? She could only be sold by the father. So the moment the father dies, she goes to Cheros. She goes free. He says, that if when a girl turns a Naira, she becomes a Naira, she does not leave her father's Rishos, only when she becomes a Begeres. But a slave, a Shifcha, does leave her master when she becomes a Naira. In other words, the father is more severe. He gets another half a year. So if she leaves her father's domain, when he dies, so certainly she should leave the Odin's domain when the father dies. Because the father is more severe. This is more of a lot of but we already slugged that up. From the fact that we say over here that she gets to keep the Mitziah, but what about the father? You see that the father's death doesn't put her in ownership. It goes, says, Gemara, no, no raya. We're talking about that there's a father here. When the Mishnah says that it goes to them, it doesn't mean it goes to the girl. It just means it doesn't go to the master. Who does it go to? To the father. La puki de rabba doesn't go to the father, it goes to the master. When a woman gets divorced and she finds something, it goes to herself. Says Gemara, of course. What's the chiddush b'chlal? Says the Gemara, we're talking about this exact case, Rabbi Yisai, right here. There's a couple. He throws a get to his wife and it lands directly in the middle. Now we don't know if it's closer to him or closer to her, because if it's closer to her, Divorced. Closer to him, not divorced. So it's a suffix. In that suffix, he has to continue supporting her, but they, they act like the divorced. He has to support her. And the whole reason why when a woman finds something, she has to give it to her husband, there shouldn't be any fighting. But they're in such a huge fight already that it doesn't really matter. He gets to keep the mitz- uh, she gets to keep the mitzvah or a boy side. Have a wonderful day. Shilam Aloy, Soy Nai, Lord, remind you of Israel.